Uh, in this video, uh, we are going. This is the second part of the video regarding the layers of the soul. In this video, we will be discussing about the muscles of the second layer of the soul. So, in the first part of the video, we have uh, discussed the easy way to remember the muscles of each of the layer of the soul. So, which are the muscles constituting the second layer of the soul? These are the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg which come into the second layer of the soul. These muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg which come into the soul are the flexor digitorial longus and the flexor hallucis longus. And there are two other muscles which are associated with this muscle. That is the flexor digitorum accessorius which is accessory to the flexor digitorum longus muscle and the lumbricals which are originating from the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus also constitute the second layer of the soul. So which are the muscles? First muscle is the flexor hallucis longus. So flexor hallucis longus, we have discussed the origin of flexor hallucis longus. So even though it is coming into the gray toe, the origin of this muscle is from the fibula. So it is originating from the lower three-fourth of the posterior surface of the fibula except the lower 2.5 cm and adjoining interosseous membrane. So even though this is coming into the gray toe, it is originating from the fibula. So originating from the fibula, it passes downwards and the tension of this muscle comes here. That is the tension of this muscle is coming here like this. So this is the tension of the flexor hallucis longus. This is the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus muscle. Now there is another muscle here that is the flexor digitorum longus. This, this is another muscle which is arising from the posterior compartment. That is it is a muscle of the posterior compartment. So uh, we know that flexor digitorum longus is, is, to, it, is supply, it is getting inserted into the four toes except the great toe so uh, it, it but it is originating from the tibia bone so, okay so this is uh, originating from the tibia so flexor digitorum longus is originating from the upper two-third of the medial part of the posterior surface of the tibia below the solenoid so we have discussed about the origin of these two muscles in the discussion of the posterior compartment of the leg now the tendon of this muscle also passes downwards and what happens uh, flexor uh, digitorum longus tendon so this is the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus and you have another one that is the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus now these two tendons so this is the tendon of flexor digitorum longus so, so uh, we know that although the flexor hallucis longus is originating from the fibula and the flexor digitorum longus is originating from the tibia they cross each other in the second layer of the tendon of these two muscle will cross in the second layer of the soul so they are crossing each other now the tendon of flexor hallucis longus comes downwards and it is getting inserted into the plantar surface of the base of distal phalanx of the big toe like this so this is the flexor hallucis longus these two tendons will cross each other and the flexor hallucis longus tendon gets inserted into the plantar surface of the base of distal phalanx of the great toe like this now what is the nerve supply of this muscle the flexor hallucis longus uh, being the muscle of the posterior compartment of the leg, this is supplied by the tibial nerve. So, tibial nerve is supplying this. So, now what is the action? It is flexor hallucis longus. So, this is causing flexion at, it is causing plantar flexion of the big toe. So, action is plantar flexion of the big toe. So, besides this, it is also causing, it is causing, Plantar flexion of angle joint. Plantar flexion of angle joint. Besides this, it is also maintaining the medial longitudinal arch. Now, the tendon of the flexor digitorial longus, it, it is going to each of these toes like this. 
and it is getting inserted into the plantar surface or base of distal phalanx of each of these toes. So like this it is getting inserted into the plantar surface or base of distal phalanx of each of these toes. Now nerve supply being the muscle of the posterior compartment of the leg this is also supplied by the tibial nerve. The action of this muscle is it causes plantar flexion of the lateral four toes. Plantar flexion of lateral four toes. And it also causes plantar flexion of angle joint. Plantar flexion of angle joint. Now this muscle also maintains the medial longitudinal arch. Now what is the other muscle that is which is associated with the or it is accessory to the flexor digitorum longus that is the flexor digitorum accessorius. Now next muscle which we are going to discuss about this is the flexor digitorum accessorius. Now the muscle that is flexor digitorum accessorius has got a medial part and the medial part is originating from the medial concave surface of the calcaneum and it consists of a lateral part like this. So the lateral part is uh, originating from a region just below the uh, lateral tubercle of the calcaneum and from the long plantar ligament so now these two heads are meeting each other as at an acute angle now these two heads of the flexor digitorum accessories are meeting at the an acute angle and this is getting inserted into the laterally lateral part of the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus so flexor so this is the flexor digitorum accessories it is the tendon of these muscles it consists of two heads that is medial and lateral head and uh, the two heads join at acute angle and this together get inserted into the lateral part of the tendon of flexor digitorum longus now what is the nerve supply of the flexor digitorum accessories so being on the lateral side it is also supplied by the main trunk of lateral plantar nerve so now what is the action of this muscle the action is it straightens the pull of long flexor tendons and flexes the toes through the long tendons now we have other muscle which is originating from the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus like the upper limb it is the lumbricans so these are the lumbricans in total in total we have four tendon of the flexor digitorum longus so we have four lumbricans so we know that the first lumbrical is originating from the medial part of the tendon of first tendon of the flexor digitorum longus like this so in total you have four lumbricals so first lumbrical is originating from the medial side of the tendon that is first tendon of the flexor digitorum longus like this so it is originating like this this is the first lumbrical and the first lumbrical is getting inserted into the dorsal digital expansion so it passes on the medial aspect of the metatarsophalgia joints and get inserted into the dorsal digital extension so the first lumbrical you can see that it is unipinnate and the second so this was the first lumbrical now the second lumbrical is bipinnate it is uh, raising from the adjacent sides of the first and the second tendon of the flexor digitorum longus like this so so this is bipinnate it is arising from both of these tendons like this and the tendon of this muscle is getting inserted into the dorsal digital expansion so that was the second one similarly the third one is also bipinnate arising from the adjacent side of the second and the third tendon of flexor digitorum longus and it is getting inserted into the dorsal digital expansion like this and the fourth one is originating from the adjacent side of third and fourth tendon of flexor digitorum longus and it is getting inserted into the dorsal digital expansion 
So you can see that only the first lumbrical is unipinnate and all the other three lumbricals are bipinnate which is arising from the adjacent part of the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus. Now about the now supply of the lumbrical. So we are discussing about the lumbricals. So the first lumbrical, first lumbrical is supplied by the medial plantar nerve. So it is on the medial aspect, so it is supplied by the medial plantar nerve. Now other three, other three are supplied by the deep branch of lateral plantar nerve. So I, how can you remember that only the first lumbrical is slightly different that is it is unipinnate and it is on the medial aspect. So it is different from all the three being supplied by the medial plantar now and the other three which are bipinnate are supplied together supplied by the deep branch of the lateral plantar now. So now what is the action? Action is they maintain extension of the digit. So they are maintaining extension of digits at interphalangeal joints so that in walking and running position the toes do not buckle under so that is the action of the lumbricals so these are the muscles of the second layer of the sole these are muscles coming from the posterior compartment of the leg and the muscles which are associated with this so it is quite easy to remember that that is all about the muscles of second layer of the sole we will discuss in the part 3 of the video we will be discussing more about the other layers of the sole Thank you for watching this video. To see more videos on my channel, please subscribe the channel. Thank you.